Have you, how did you meet Miss Trina Jeffries? We were in prison together in 73. <laughs> she got out before me. And she said, when I get out, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I hold my, oh, my whole career to Trina when we got out of <laughs> So when did you meet Trina Jeffries? I met Trina Jeffries probably about 30 years ago. We used to date. And uh, I'm back here. Matter of fact, I'm going to be proposing to her on tonight. Yeah, yeah, she's going to. Surprise is out, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she don't even know. How do you know Trina? Let me tell you something. I met, uh, you know her as Trina. I know her sister Cantaloupe. I never made Cantaloupe until I heard her one time on stage. I said, I've got to try something. Some cantaloupe with uh, something sweet out of that. So, uh, you know, I just met her at an event and we become friends. L let me ask you this How did you meet Trina? Well, I remember when I did my first stand up set ever, and she was in the audience. And it was actually like a, a, an Apollo type of a setup. And so um, I ended up winning the competition. And Trina saw me and took me under her wing, and I've been traveling with her and performing with her ever since. And <laughs> And how do you know Trina? Uh, actually, uh, no, just around about, just doing comedy. She and I have both been doing comedy for about 20 years. I started over at Steve Harvey's, and I think she used to poke her head in the door. And I just really got a chance to really meet her um, and, and, and form a, you know, a relationship. How long have you known Trina, and, and when did you meet her? Well, I met Trina actually, uh, man, some about 14, 15 years ago when I was playing with another group. And she was doing it back then, you know, two wings, fries, and a pepper. All I want is a Trina, I love you, yeah. Trina, I love you. She know I love you. Jeffries, a.k.a. Sister Cantaloupe, First Lady of Gospel Comedy, yes. laughing out loud with the Lord. I mean, honey, you done did it all. I've been trying. I've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot. God bless. Uh, armed and Dangerous. Uh, I've just done Unbelievable. So it's been a lot. It's been a lot presenting uh, other comedians and stuff like that. So God has just been blessing. Yes. You know, Trina, I have to ask you, how much of Sister Cantaloupe is really you? Uh, maybe 80%. <laughs> <laughs> You crack me up. I watch you every Sunday morning when I'm getting ready for church in the morning. Because, yeah. you know, you just make me laugh so much because you're so happy and humble and, and just the way you bring it all the time. And it's just, it's always with love, but it's just, you know, especially when you tell that little boy to get away from the offering pan. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> now that's on go count low go. Yes, yes I do. Because yes, he yes. always trying to, you know, take his yes. money back out the offering pan. Uh -huh. No, sir, leave it there, okay? Uh -huh. Leave it there. That's what the Bible says. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and your pennies too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you've been in this industry 20 five years. What point is did you have other people coming up and trying to be gospel comedians? Well, I've been in it over 30 years. I've just been doing it full time for 25 years. <laughs> yes, yes. And every and people that's coming behind me, they call and say, you know, hey, I want to get out of the secular uh, comedy and I'm going to stop the cursing and stuff because the Lord has saved me. How do I transform over into gospel comedy? I say, you just do it. God says, you know, come as you are and then he'll change the rest. So if you come as you are, you clean up, the, you clean up your act and you can do it. You can do just what I do. Great, great. Let me ask you this too. So five minutes before you hit the stage, what's it like for you? I mean, what, what are your go-to rituals? Uh, my go-to rituals, I talk to dad. Dad's my father, God. <laughs> I talk to him and I say, dad, this is your show. You know the people, you know what they want, you know what they do, you know how to make them laugh. Give it to me and I'll give it to them. So I'm like a preacher. I, I try not to have too much in my head until I'm ready to go on stage. Because if I practice and I practice, then I'm counting on my fingers and I'm thinking. But when I'm just free and open, I just hit it and kill it. Just like that. Just like that. Blessings, blessings. I love to hear that kind of stuff because, you know, people who, you know, you, you really get into your craft when you let God use you. Right, right, yes. Right, right. So I have to ask you, okay. what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you on stage that made you almost break character? Oh, wow. 
over 25 years, there's so many come to my mind. I remember before I started doing straight stand up because I'm a I'm a storyteller. I tell stories and and I and I bring you into the things. And so when I was doing my my first uh, part of of Cantaloupe, I was telling a uh, skit about Sister Cantaloupe at her own funeral. And so we had the casket there and we had a head there and everything like that. And it was you know we had turned the lights down low and stuff. And so Sister Cantaloupe was at her own funeral and she didn't know who was in the casket. So she was like, I wonder who's that in that casket. You know, and she was like, okay. So they had built me a stage and it was plywood. And so in my song, I would walk around and say, uh, uh, I forgot the name of the song. It's like an old a hymn song. So I walked around the casket and when I did this and I, and I looked in the casket in my skit, I was supposed to go, ah, it's me. Well, I did this and I went, ah, and we had built a head with a cantaloupe, everything, you know, like that. And the head popped out. <laughs> it popped out of the casket and went into the audience and people were throwing my head around. <laughs> it took us 15 minutes to stop laughing and get the set back because people thought it was real. It was like, ah, <laughs> they was chunking <laughs> <laughs> it was a styrofoam head with my, you know, I hit uh -huh. the glasses and the wig. It was crazy. So that's my craziest moment to me today. That was a awesome story. I just want you to know <laughs> that just made my evening. So you know what? After 25 years, what's what's new? What's coming up for Sister Cantaloupe and Miss Trina Jeffrey? My thing is, I want to, uh, I want to bring back, I want to bring others up. That's why I'm doing the 25 years. I could have did a, a, a whole set just by myself. I can do two hours by myself. But I wanted to add other people in and bring them in because there are other comedians out there that's trying to make it, that's trying to starving. And I want to uh, set a platform for other comedians to be on tour because a lot of them don't get to get out of their region or out of their, out of their area. So I want to be one of those promoters that's not only a comedian, but I can promote a show and, and actually bring uh, other comedians on stage with me and share my stage and that's what I really want to do share my stage have a show or some kind of television show some kind of stage or whatever just to, show, to uh, share my stage with the other comedians you know what God bless you for, for mentoring and reaching out to others and bringing them up so that they can experience the things that you have and, yes. and learn from you know your long trek and longevity in this industry yes, yes. so also I know that you are up for gospel comedy legend from church stars coming yes. up October 1st yes, yes. how do you feel about that I'm excited about that man and to, to be honored, I'm so grateful because, you know, people don't have to do anything nice for you. They don't have to give you nothing. They don't have to recognize you. They can say, yeah, right, okay, so, and, you know, I've been working on my job 25 years. Ain't nobody gave me nothing, you know, so. But for somebody to think of you and to honor you and to give you something like that and call you a legend, that that that, mean, that means I need to do something to become that legend. I mean, I need to, to fulfill those shoes. And that's why I'm saying I'm trying to reach back and make sure that other people are eating the way I'm eating. You know, people are saying, can I go on the road with you? Can I do I don't have to say so right now but now I want to get in that in that driver's seat where I can say yes you can come on the road with me yes you can come on the road with me and that would make a legend because a legend leaves a legacy and that's what I want to leave a legacy